Thank you. I can't tell you all how uh, excited I am, honored to be chosen as the next coach uh, for the University of Utah. Uh, I would like to start off by thanking President Young for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this team. And obviously, uh, Dr. Chris Hill, the relationship that we've forged here uh, recently, I think having belief and uh, faith in somebody is a pretty powerful thing. And I'm here to tell you that the opportunity given to me uh, means an awful lot to me. And uh, I understand the challenges that lie ahead. Speaking of belief, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my family who's here. Um, my wife, Jan, in the front and five children who we refer to as our, uh, our poker term is our full house, uh, three jacks and two queens. And her mom and dad are here, Jim and Barb as well. And uh, I can tell you that uh, we're all so excited to be uh, in a position where we can call Utah our home. We look forward to spending many years here. This place is special. Uh, look around. When I played here uh, for the Utah Jazz, I knew it was special. It was one of the closest places to my home uh, at Montana. I got in the car when the season started. I was able to drive uh, seven hours down the road, and here I was. It's, uh, it reminds me very much of home. Uh, the campus, uh, 29,000 students, is remarkable, 190 degree options. Uh, and, and as I spoke with uh, Chris and, and President Young, there's really no options here that aren't available for student athletes to get their degrees. I know when I was at the University of Montana, whenever we were recruiting a person, uh, if they wanted to be an engineer, for example, we immediately had to scratch them off the list because that wasn't an option. So the excitement here with the, being back uh, in a campus setting, having the opportunities uh, for student athletes, this city, uh, certainly the tradition that's been here is gigantic, and moving into the Pac-12 is a very, very bright time uh, that, that we have to look forward to. I want you to uh, understand what my goal is. Obviously, we've got a lot of work to do uh, in restoring uh, the pride, but I think if I put my cliff notes down, that would be it. I want to get the pride back uh, at the University of Utah in the basketball program. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, and there's really no little things. There's a lot of big things. I, I made the comparison that it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit like raising a family. It takes a village to raise a family, uh, to raise children. I think the same thing needs to happen with this program. Uh, but we're looking at some of the student athletes uh, over here on my left who I look forward. I haven't had a chance to meet a lot of them, but I look forward to uh, meeting with them soon. And this, it is so bright here. I think about the, the opportunities that they have, uh, the resources available, various programs to help them succeed. But what we need from them, I need to find 15 guys, 13 on scholarship, 15 total, uh, that are willing to make some great sacrifices. If you've been involved with uh, college athletics, you know that being a student athlete is not an easy thing. And there's a lot of demands on time and energy uh, that we're going to be asking them. And I can tell them uh, that they're going to have a group of coaches uh, at their disposal that are going to get the absolute most out of them on the floor, uh, maximize their potential. They're going to obviously have a faculty that set up a training staff, strength and conditioning coaches, everything that they need if they bring that passion and commitment. Uh, I'm confident that we can get to a place that we'll all be very proud of. I wanted to, uh, I did a little Google search on the internet uh, about leadership, and there were, I think, a million and a half hits uh, options that I could look at. Uh, I am going to be asked to be the leader of this program, and I look forward to it. Um, a lot of different opinions, definitions, and I wanted to share four that particularly stood out uh, to me, and this is what I'm going to ask of our players from time to time, and I think this is what you can expect from me. Uh, number one is getting people to think believe, see, or do what they may not have been able to do without you. That's pretty powerful leadership. It usually comes in some sort of sacrifice. They're going to have to pay the price, as I mentioned before. Uh, it's not always going to be easy. Uh, certainly, there's going to be some tough love. I can relate to raising children, and you can't tell them what they want to hear all the time. You have to uh, use some tough love, and I can do that with these players. One of the other things, uh, 
definitions of leadership is getting people to buy into something that is far bigger than themselves. This university and this basketball program has so much history, tradition. Uh, it isn't about me and it isn't about you guys as individuals, uh, but it's about a lot of the people before us that were here, coaches, uh, players. I throw out some names, Andre Miller, Danny Vrains, I think is here, Keith Van Horn, Bogut, Jensen. Those are more recognizable names. Certainly Rick Majerus had an awful lot to do with the success here. Um, but it's, it's going to be us. It's not going to be me. It's going to be us, and it's going to be we. Um, I'm happy to be a part of we. Everything that I do is going to be with the thought of the program in mind and with the thought of the university in mind. I'll take a back seat. Uh, I'm, as I said, I'm happy to be part of we, and I look forward to meeting with our players uh, here shortly after this meeting and finding out who is with me on wanting to be a part of we. I think that's very important. Here's another one. Uh, leading, leadership, asking people to give a little bit more of themselves than they thought they were capable of giving. Okay, everybody in this room wants to win. We all want to win. We all have the will to win. Uh, but what is infinitely more rare is having the will to prepare to win and putting in the kind of work that's necessary. Uh, extra shots in the gym, weightlifting, uh, conditioning, how you take care of your bodies. I've, I've been afforded the opportunity to be around some pretty good players. Um, the other day we played the Lakers in, uh, in New Jersey, and I was, at the, uh, I was at the arena quite early as it was my game preparation. I had to spend some time, and I walked into the arena at maybe 2 in the afternoon, and I saw Kobe Bryant there shooting a bunch of jump shots in the middle of the day, and I told a couple other guys on our staff, this is going to be a tough night for the Nets because that kind of focus. And I don't know, um, you know, the work ethic amongst our team right now, but I can tell you if you want to succeed and you want to get to that point, it takes a great deal of sacrifice. My last uh, definition of leadership, and this is really at the end of the day why I'm here, um, gives me goosebumps, but being a positive role model in hopes of having a lasting effect on a person's life. That's what it's all about. I ran into a, uh, I ran into a former player of mine, a walk-on from Georgia, who p walked on from Atlanta uh, to the University of Montana. I hadn't seen him probably in uh, five years, uh, but I ran into him at the national championship game in in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. The University of Montana was playing in that game. We ran into each other at the concession stand, and he came up to me and what he told me about his experience at Montana for two years and the kind of impact I had on him had such an effect on me. And that's what's so encouraging and so enticing for me to get back in the college uh, arena. I want to be a part of that. That's probably the most important. I know I can coach basketball. Um, a lot of times there's frustration in the NBA with not being able to be a role model. And I know in this setting, this environment, I'll certainly be able to do that. Now, I'm not naive enough to stand up here and think I'm going to be able to tell you about my basketball philosophy, um, but I, I put the pencil, uh, figured out how many games I've been involved with as a player since college started, and it's probably 1,500 or 1,600 games uh, that I've either played in or coached. And obviously, talent makes a huge difference. And trust me, we're going to recruit, we're going to get the talent necessary to compete at this level. But uh, it's really a lot of times it's a lot simpler than we want to make it. And I have found um, three elements that lead to success. And the very first one, I'm sure everybody in the room knows, if two teams are equally talented, the team wins that plays the hardest and that maybe has a little bit more drive, you can say has a bigger heart, uh, something special inside them, maybe they're the underdog. Uh, and I can tell you that work ethic is something that can be learned and developed. And our guys, uh, the University of Utah men's basketball team, uh, my goal is that we won't be outplayed. There won't be a team that outworks us very often. That's number one. Uh, the other element is playing smart, uh, not making mistakes, executing. Uh, we'll spend an awful lot of time 
on uh, executing our offensive and defensive game plans. We'll trust each other. We'll take good shots. You can still execute, but you have to make shots. At the end of the day, uh, we're going to have to make shots. But playing smart is going to be a big part of it. The last thing is, is playing together. Um, I'm a big believer in, in synergy and the ability of uh, the masses to be able to get something done a, a lot higher level uh, than, than an individual. I mean, the prime example to me, and I've used this before, if you can bench press 100 pounds by yourself uh, and a teammate can bench press 100 pounds by yourself, you would think that together you could get on a bench press and bench 200 pounds. Well, physics says that you can do more than that. That's one example of doing things together. Our guys will play together. We're going to have people that are willing to maybe pass up a, uh, what might be considered a good shot to get a teammate an excellent shot. We're going to have somebody that's willing to rotate over when you're beat defensively uh, to take a charge and help a teammate out. We will do these things. Um, we will do these things. So we will play hard. That's a guarantee. We'll play smart and we'll play together. And I want to remind us that it's we and not me. Um, finally, uh, I want everybody to know in the room how fortunate I am to, to have this opportunity. I, I've talked about the previous coaches that have been here, the proud tradition that's been here. Um, and I know uh, Dr. Hills interviewed a lot of great coaches. The, uh, the opportunity that I have in this situation that I have is, is a great one. And I can tell you all um, that once the work begins, once the press conference and some of this stuff is over with, that uh, I'm going to absolutely pour my heart and soul into this program. And we're going to get the basketball program back to a position where we can all be very proud. But again, it takes a village of people. Um, and a lot of people in this room can certainly help out. Uh, it is a great day to be a Ute, as Dr. Hill said, and I'm very happy uh, to be the coach. Our family looks very much forward to being a part of this community too. Thank you very much.